Mislav, this is wonderful. I saw this earlier this afternoon, and I know a place where this will come in very handy in our, uh, in our Jordan work in the Zaftri refugee camp where we can influence. So thank you. There's so many great solutions, so many things to see, so much hope that I'm finding here in the week that I've been with the U.S. Embassy touring places in Warsaw and now Krakow. And the one that I'd like to speak to you about is a compliment to so many of the others that you've been talking about and we've been seeing. And in Paul Hawkins' great compendium, Draw Down, the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reverse global warming, which I'm tasked with doing as the director of the Climate Uncertainty Mitigation and Adaptation Program at the University of South Florida in Tampa, in a place where we were disallowed to use the word climate change for a while. Um, we have the 100 most sustainable solutions to reverse global warming based on meticulous research by leading scientists and policymakers around the world. And of the 100, ranked number 30 is the commercial large-scale application of the research I do with my students and with the startups that I work with, methane digesters that turn food waste in the urban environment into fuel and clean clean fuel and fertilizer. And then ranked 64 of 100 is my particular passion, small-scale home and community-scale biodigesters that turn the food waste that are generated by your homes, apartments, restaurants, cafeterias into that same clean fuel and fertilizer simply and cost-effectively. It's ranked 64, but I would argue to you that it should be ranked number one. And I'll try to convince you of that by showing you a few things about it. Ah. Um, former President Bill Clinton totally gets it, and when he brought me up to, to New York last year to join the Clinton Global Initiative and to sign this commitment to action so that we could turn these effective technologies into solutions, particularly for the Zatir refugee camp and other areas, um, my wife is a Palestinian Jordanian from the West Bank who's lived under the, uh, the political uh, problem of having her electricity and her water and heat cut off at odd moments and for long periods, we knew that they, we had to find solutions. And President Clinton put his arm around my shoulder before we took this picture and he said, now Thomas, you and I know that there's treasure and that they're trash. Now let's do this. Let's do this. And um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I, I had memorized the Polish equivalent, um, but some one of you can shout it out. Uh, would you mind, Ivan? The Polish equivalent of what President Clinton said was, Rup misfoje. Rup right? We gotta do it. We gotta do it. And that thing that we are going to do is to turn the table scraps that you put in the garbage almost every day, or some of you put in compost, any of you composters, which is very noble, but you're losing all the energy value and the nitrogen value. So what fat and dirt, yeah, it, whereas the biodigester takes everything. So let me move back a little bit here. President Clinton and the foundation have a prize called the HALT Prize that they bring every year to their thing. And the 2016 challenge was crowded urban spaces. And I met an enormous number of people who are working on this issue. This is a fascination for me because I did my PhD and my master's in urban planning at UCLA and went off to Guatemala and went to Egypt and went to Delhi and, and places around the world. And I have a fascination with slums. Ended up getting major funding from Insincorator Corporation from Emerson Electronics to the tune of a half million dollars to go into the favelas of Brazil, into these shanty towns and provide ways to eliminate the rats, the smoke, the flies, the possibility of bubonic plague by taking not just the food waste, but food waste and all toilet waste and putting it in simple methane digesters that anybody can build anywhere, anytime. The, uh, the type of digester that I'm talking about started out for me when I was working in Kenya after being in India and Cairo doing this and it is basically, it started out with this design, a simple water tank with three pipes in it. And we dumped all of our waste. We've done this in Haiti as well. And the natural fermentation of the bacteria found in toilet waste 
turns the food waste into a highly efficiently produced and clean methane gas and this liquid fertilizer far superior to anything that we could get by composting. Just an incredible uh, solution. So I started going around the world teaching people. I want to play you, if you don't mind, a song, a music video I wrote about it. Dr. Carve of the Royal Technology Institute, RT, has developed a revolutionary approach to generating methane. The new method is more efficient than the traditional one, and it doesn't need done. Our system is 400 times as efficient as the dam-based biogas plant. And because of that, we could reduce the size. So I took this technology back to Cairo, to the slums, where I was doing my PhD. And within a few days, I was generating electricity using typical gasoline engines with slight modifications that any 10-year-old can do, and generating electricity for about 45 minutes from one bucket of urban kitchen waste every day to charge batteries. I was so excited that we could implement this on the roofs of urban slums and sandy towns that it became my mission in life to get this small-scale solution improved and get it to market. No soot, no smoke, no danger, not explosive. That is a solution that makes compost pale by comparison, yet I still love compost. Yeah, that's true. Maybe the Egyptian man go, yeah, that's true. It's his garbage. Thank you for Solar Cities. I'm T.H. Culhane with our first. So I wrote a song about it that I'd like to sing for you since I'm on the karaoke stage. The Zebulin community in Cairo, Egypt. And this is our biodigester. The improvement was using local international bulk containers that you can find in any country anywhere in the world in the aftermarket for less than $100 and plumb them with local plumbing supplies. That's right. And that gas is going to be under pressure. Making biogas is a gas, gas, gas. It's the same gas as the gas we pass. Making biogas is a gas, gas, gas. It's the same gas as the gas we pass When you see trash piled in the middle of a third world country street When you hear the food for fuel debate and wonder how it eats Would we really save much energy if we all gave up heat? Do we really need those nukes or is that just the drum maybe? Must be some other way Is there another way? That's your ass And it's a gas Come on, you all did that as kids And it's a blast it's biogas. Yeah, biogas, that's right. Sorry, we lived through the ages, stupid. The US was king of fools. Studied blatant propaganda that we needed fossil fuels. Though we've always had bacteria and other microbes too. Making methane gas and alcohol and other biofuels since Henry Ford. And way before. There's been no need. To go to war, there is an answer to please Al Gore. We can't afford to just ignore the simple fact of biogas. That's all it is. And I built one in my home in Cairo and I lived in the slums with my wife and then in Germany on a porch. From microbes and garbage recycled from thermophils, mesophils, cyprophils too. This is the only true natural gas. The other is still fossil fuel. Fossil fuel. Don't be fooled. It's time we switch to biogas. Without the smoke. The Germans are doing it all over. So don't you think it's kind of funny all the research, all the money that we spend each year on nukes and fossil fuels? When every city, every household has enough organic garbage to produce all of the energy we use for domestic use. So everybody's got bacteria from the cell phone through Siberia, and they live to turn our waste into new fuel. There is no energy crisis. You know, the planet's trying to help us. All the answers are in nature. Ain't that cool? Let's change the rules. We have the tools. Harness the sun and biofuels. 
Try this one at home. Just a couple of plastic containers to fill some gravel and salt in the pocket. I speak that fast. I hear you. The end of the collect the gas. Feed the tank of kitchen waste today. And tomorrow you get up to two hours of truly natural gas. Because making biogas is a gas gas. You can sing it. It's the same gas as the gas we pass. My goals are taking care of business every day. Taking dirty business and making it okay. Here's the science. Aerobic respiration is the pathway that we use. It starts by hydrolyzing food waste into simpler molecules. Acetogenesis forms hydrogen. Acetic acid, too, they're reassembled by methanogens into a gaseous brew of CO2. 40%. And CH4, 60%. Look at that smile, which we can burn. Or we can store like they did for hundreds of years. It can be used to cook or feed our homes. Generators, refrigerators, cars and trucks and more. It's time we switch from oil. No need for nukes at all. It's time we switch to biogas. And they have big ones in Germany. And that's my little boy. He's going to be 10. He helped me to convert my first engine at home in my apartment in Germany to run on biogas. And I was amazed at how easy it was. Let there be light. Now that's not something that you generally think of. You don't usually expect that from a guy in a suit and tie, but we all gotta let our hair down once in a while. Now, of course, there's some caveats here. When I say no need for nukes and oil, I'm talking at the domestic scale. Certainly, biogas will not meet all of our contemporary energy needs unless we put really efficient appliances in and, and processes. But at the domestic scale, we found that there is certainly enough energy embedded in the photosynthetic chemical bombs of food waste and toilet waste and lard, yard, lard, lard clippings, lard, yes, yard clippings to power our domestic sphere. And I know it because, as was mentioned, my wife and I live off grid completely. And we power 100% of our Xbox 360 gaming console, two big screen TVs, our microwave oven, our dishwasher, our washing machine, our super bright LED lights, all that on solar electricity. And then we cook and heat our water on biogas and run our hybrid refrigerator most of the time on biogas. It, when you live it, talk about what they call lived testing or what you're doing. Te who mentioned that? It's te field tested, live life tested. This is a life-tested technology for me for the past 10 years. And I made a tutorial, and I won't show you all of it, but to show people how easy it is to make this. It's hard for most people to appreciate how easy it is to build your own home biogas system. Perhaps we want things to be more complicated than they are in order to somehow justify the suffering we've had to endure all these centuries trying to live without domestic biodigesters. Or perhaps we've simply kept the simple engineering principles out of the hands of the right people women and children particularly, people who would intuitively understand that the waste from our kitchens and bathrooms can complete the growth cycle and become soil and food and fuel once again, and would realize that all we are really building is a stomach with a mouth and a throat, an anus and a ureter. This biomimicry is easy to understand if you think of a biodigester as a baby or as an animal, a fire-breathing dragon if you like, rather than a machine. But it is simple. Here's how you do it, the Solar Cities open source way. Get so I'm not going to play through the entire, uh, the entire tutorial for you. It basically teaches you step by step how to build it out of local materials. And that's all fine and good. It's lovely. But of course, there's an entrepreneurial spirit within us that wants to see this commercialized and get out. So while I've been teaching people around the world for 10 years, and I have a Facebook group with 12,000 people in it, and we're all building the Solar Cities IBC Biodigester, and it's all open source. Our partners in China and India, in Oregon, and in Israel, and in Kenya, and in South Africa, are commercializing home-scale biogas. And the most successful of them uh, are 
our colleagues my partners at home biogas israel i've been with them for almost a decade and the funny thing is that we're none of us are competitive i've invested in several startups in different countries but i keep returning to my buddies in israel because they work with palestinians and my wife is palestinian and they have a design that i think is better than any of the others although the others are knocking theirs off and they don't care they're like great better for us that everybody copies us because we're going to be the brand leader and they're doing advertising and marketing and r d for us it's an open source citizen science movement and their intellectual property is their design that makes it more functional and sexy but the principles are so easy we still teach everybody how to make your own like go do it or buy one from us so it works really well and they've gone through a lot of uh, a lot of iterations back about eight seven eight years ago it looked like this but it was heavy and kludgy but it was working well this is how it works we were working with Insincorator Corporation that was donating the Insincorators or offering them at low price so we could grind all the food waste. That's 20 minutes of cooking gas right there. Put it in. That easy. And grind it. So it was there and then he, and then he, um, he shows how we cook on it and run an electric, uh, sorry, a, a gas hot water heater. And so the video goes on, but this is the old video and shipping was too much for this unit. So, as other people began to adopt that technology, our Israeli partners at Home Biogas, where did my, um, uh -oh. okay. they moved on to version 1.0 of the flexible shippable Home Biogas, and it looks like, it looks like this. Um, that is to say, it looks like this. Save the planet. Well, no. We are here to share with you something practical that we have actually built to bring what people say for years is the future to right now. Food waste and declining energy sources are major environmental hazards. Biogas is the solution. It's a natural process in which organic waste is converted into cooking gas. So five years ago, we went on a mission to bring biogas to every home. This is from five years ago. We so grouped the best engineers, young. scientists, designers, and product people together. And now it's here. Home biogas. Home biogas is the first family-sized, user-friendly, affordable biogas system. It is the change, and you can put it in your backyard. Home biogas comes in an easy-to-assemble kit and its use is as simple as can be. Just throw in your organic waste, and there you go. A hot stove ready for cooking, a cycle of in-house energy, and it runs with no electricity. Your leftovers provide you two to three hours of energy a day. Any kitchen leftovers, including meat and dairy, work. Even your pets live it. Just toss it all inside home biogas, and the bacteria in the digester will decompose the organic material and release biogas. As a byproduct of the digestion, home biogas even generates an incredible plant fertilizer. It's the kind you pay a large sum for in garden stores. In this manner, home biogas creates an eco-cycle. Waste turns into gas and fertilizer. Fertilizer is used to grow food and gas to cook it. Leftovers are more waste. We are way past the prototype phase. We've already installed more than 150 units that have been running for over a year. That's five years ago. Until now, we've worked with international organizations in underserved communities. Now, we're bringing it to you. You are in charge of creating your own clean, renewable energy. Energy that you can trust. We need your help to make home biogas an accessible household item. So if you want to bring the change, get home biogas. Let's create a better future for our next generation. So things have been going very, very well with, uh, with home biogas. And as our Indian colleagues and Chinese colleagues begin to replicate the designs, home biogas has moved on. And I think it's this one, no, it's this one here. We've got a version 2.0 that's coming out this summer.
simpler, almost half the price. Of biogas. That means banana pancake. A 2015 we launched the first Indiegogo campaign, showing the world how to turn this into this. The idea of a backyard applied that turns organic food scraps into cooking gas was first of its kind. We were so excited to see the soft people camp here from all over the world. In Pennsylvania the there, and my mom and my wife there the first in New York. enabled us to get home biogas to the heart of remote communities in need. For people Uganda, down there where the Republic, Republic suddenly had clean, free energy. It was a huge step in fulfilling our vision. We're in Florida. The amazing support inspired us to think forward. What if we could take the home biogas appliance, make it even better, and reduce its overall cost? It took us over a year. Home Biogas 2.0 is an advanced appliance that produces green, renewable energy. Installation is now simpler. Just fill the digester with water, mount the gas container using the supplied sandbags, and you're ready to go. The 2.0 version is 50% more productive, easier to maintain, and super durable. We've also added a home biogas stove to give you the perfect solution. An average family produces about two liters of waste a day. Why should organic waste go into giant polluting landfills when it can go back into nature? Home biogas 2.0 can now produce up to three hours of cooking gas per day, more than enough for an average family. Plus, a top quality, completely organic fertilizer that goes back into the soil, your own backyard eco-cycle. Once food waste goes in, the bacteria digest the organic material and release biogas and fertilizer. No electricity is required, it is completely safe to use, odorless, and can digest anything, from fruits and veggies to meat and dairy. Home Biogas 2.0 is now ready for mass production. We need your help. Let me get out of that. Okay. So, the home biogas thing has become my, my big passion, but it's not just because of the biogas. So I consider, and I'll wrap this up, Biogas to be the solar plexus of the nexus, the food, energy, water nexus, eliminating all organic waste now because of our experiments in New York and in Pennsylvania and at University of South Florida, where as a company, allowing people and encouraging them to put their toilet waste in as well. So where I live, 100% of my organic waste goes into my biodigester, and that's why I'm able to heat my water uh, cleanly and to grow new food. But it's the growing new food that is the most exciting thing. The gas actually is not what we love about home biogas. It turns out that the high value product is the liquid fertilizer, and I've been using tower gardens for the past five years and feeding my plants just on what comes out of my home biogas because it has the nitrogen, the phosphorus, the potassium. I never have to buy fertilizer or use soil again. So how delighted was I when today I met this young man, Camel, who runs Aero Tower, a startup here that you should know about. He's unable to be here and share with us. But Camel's Aero Tower is Poland's first hydroponic, aeroponic, vertical, indoor, outdoor food production system. And the only problem in price with all of these in the market is the cost of the liquid fertilizer solutions, which as they said in the video, you pay top dollar for. We pay nothing. So even if I wasn't interested in the gas, I would have a home biogas system or build a home biogas system because I use the fertilizer to grow healthy food again and create that echo cycle. And so you can look at biogas systems being the support technology for the urban food production, just as we were talking today with Michael from uh, GE about how wind power and solar power in Poland could be the support technology for creating clean coal. If you want to have an integrated system, you, so you work on both and solutions where everybody gets to be part of the ecosystem, everybody has a part to play, and we eliminate all waste forever, everywhere. So thank you very much. Woo, woo, woo.